guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Now we're going to get started with GitHub and there's a lot of stuff to cover in today's video so it's probably going to be broken up into a few sections. I'll try to make sure to get the timestamps and everything set up so you can skip to the parts that you want to actually learn about. Uh, we need to get a couple things out of the way. The first thing is I'm going to be moving the M creator examples that I have from my drive to this GitHub repository, which is M creator examples. And then you can basically find the example that you want. There's a description here. Uh, right now I'm just working on variable energy. This will also allow me to work on larger projects such as variable energy as well, and then create different versions that you guys can basically find and you know explore and stuff. Uh, when I do release a, ter a specific type of version you can you'll see different uh, tags that appear under here and you can also see the releases on this part right here when there's actually a release that will show up on this part uh, there's also going to be a wiki which will allow me to help basically add documentation and stuff for things and uh, I believe you can open feature requests and stuff as well. I'll try to make sure to make sure uh, every workspace has that. So I just wanted to get that out of the way so you guys know that uh, there will be a little bit of a change when I'll be where I'll be storing the files. Hopefully this will work for uh, the upcoming tutorials and stuff like that. All right, so now onto the variable energy. Uh, let's take a look at some of the variables that we have. Uh, I'll try to simplify simplify it so it's easy to follow. So I have a couple uh, charts in paint.net that I can basically explain how things work. Now we have the blue variables here. These are just colored basically to help show that they're for a specific thing. Uh, these allow for connections to sides as it has three different values, uh, input, output, and none. Uh, none is used for something completely different, not related to what we're going to be working on really today, but it's still relevant in a sense that it's basically not being used for that side. Input basically allows input from another block. Output allows basically the block to push to that other block. Now the input and output need to be for the block that for that particular side. I'll get into that in just a second. Uh, the energy stored, this is basically the variable that all the energy gets stored to and it uh, basically requires a energy capacity which basically says okay uh, this is the cap on how much the block can actually store and then the energy stored will basically go to the maximum uh, capacity when power is added to it. Uh, there is also a send limit very similar to forge energy. Uh, you can basically send, set this to zero to disable it, but you can also basically have it any value greater than zero, and you can basically cap on how much energy th that you can basically send from that one particular block. Uh, this is, only happens on the block that has the output, and it has an input connected to it. Uh, moving on, uh, we have a, a little example here of how the plugs and stuff basically work. So for example, uh, say we're placing the block uh, north and it's facing, uh, the front of the block is facing north and the back of the block is facing south. We have blue for our output, or pardon me, blue for our input and uh, orange for our output. So basically output is facing north, input is facing south. If we place a uh, new block next to the block facing the same direction, what it's going to do is it's going to basically do a couple things. It's going to test when the player is actually placing it and if there's an output slot next to that block that is being currently placed and then it's going to realign the block to face that same direction as the output connected to that particular block. So for example, if the block is facing north and on the north side of the block that we place uh, block B, then what it's going to do is align automatically the block B block to block A. So 
it's I'll show example in just a couple seconds how that works but basically what's going on here is it's going to rotate the block and then set the variables for the direction the new direction which would be facing north and it will automatically place it any direction as long as there's an output detected for that particular block uh, other things that it's going to be doing is making sure that it's um, connected the right way and stuff like that so and uh, let's hop into the M minecraft uh, test environment and i'll show you how the cables are set up and then you guys can kind of see how all this basically works in one example and then we'll go into the code and stuff all right so we are now in game and we have the cable in our inventory it's just called the golden cable and if we place it down as you can see the block that it's currently facing is the direction of the player this is the output slot and this is our input slot so our input is facing the same direction that we're facing when we place it so in our case it was facing it's the inputs facing north uh, if we place down a block in front of the orange side uh, we can stand to the side now if we stand to the side normally it will face us so if we place it next to it it will automatically detect what direction it needs to be because the output for that particular side is facing the south direction so south is facing this way and north is facing that way so we have placed it facing south or basically facing us and what it's done is it's detected a output face right here and it's basically rotated the block to match that direction so it's easier to place the uh, block down when you're actually doing a long line uh, now it doesn't actually work on the other side you can see that it can do it doesn't really auto detect now I haven't figured that part out just yet but I plan on doing that pretty soon uh, but the other thing that we also have are some other directional things that we can test uh, if we right click on the block when shift clicking it will give us some information it says the energy how much that is currently stored so in our case it's zero and then on the other side of that dash there is the energy capacity so I've set 200 for the total energy capacity of the block and then we have our plugs which are our northeast southwest up and down directions now we know that the input is facing north because if we look at north this direction it's facing north that way uh, over on this side uh, south we can tell that it's facing or the out the output side is basically facing south so in our case it's this way this will update based on the block direction so as you can see now the output is west and the input is east so that's basically east and that is west so that's basically how it works um, I'll get into the energy transferring and stuff like that in just a second that's more uh, I can't really do an example right now because I don't have anything to generate power but we will get into that in a future video for sure and uh, let's go into amp and I'll show you the code it's not really too complicated it's pretty straightforward actually but I can see how it would be complicated for some so let's hop into amp and I'll show you how that part works so first things first we need a block to actually apply these variables to so we're going to create a block and we're going to set up the power locations to the way that we need it so generally you want the um, for a wire the input or pardon me the output facing the direction of the front of the block and the output or the input basically at the back of the block so output front input back and then you want your textures for your sides and stuff like that you might want to set a particle texture down here as well and you want to enable the player side down up north south west and east rotation right here uh, if your block is actually a 
uh, custom model, you might want to make it waterloggable as well and set up some different parts uh, for these settings. But we're using a cube, so it's perfectly fine the way it is. Other settings that you might want to do under the properties is give it a, a GUI name that makes it relevant to what it is. Uh, you might want to set the material to iron and put it under a creative tab in your mod or under the redstone tab depending on what you have. And uh, a nice sound for it is actually cloth which is the same sound as wool. Now wool also has a property of 0.8 uh, so for hardness and resistance you, get, you can set that as the same property if you want it to be very similar to wool when you're actually placing down the block. Uh, a lot of energy mods actually use the wool sound to kind of have wool properties when it comes to their wires and stuff like uh, industrial craft and other things like that. Uh, for the other settings, you can basically just leave as default and we'll move on to advanced properties now. Uh, we need the tick rate set to 1. This is important for transferring power. You don't really need anything above 1. You just need 1 and that will keep the transferring stable for every tick. Uh, another thing that you might want to do is change the color on the map so it's relevant to the Block, primary block color of your cable. In my case I went with gray just because the main texture is kind of like a gray texture. Uh, another thing with a lot of the industrial mods and stuff out there is they have the wires flammable. So I've set the same flammable flammability to 30 so that's the same as wool. Uh, tile entity we need to enable this. Disable the inventory slots to zero and uncheck these two bo boxes right here and then you're good to go. For forge energy we just left this disabled and same as forge fluid. Uh, triggers, we have three triggers going on here, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, basically we have an update tick for the transferring of power and then we have the when block added to assign the variables and when block placed to auto rotate the block when it's placed by the player. So we'll cover each individual one of these at a time. We'll starting with this one. For generation properties though, I don't have the block to generate and that's all there is to this particular thing. So let's take a look at the actual procedures for when block added. So if we open up when block added, there is all the variables that we're basically assigning to every rotation. We need to test for the rotation of the particular block, but before we do that, we need to run it on server side so it basically runs properly because it is relevant to the block and we don't need it to run on client side as well as server side. So I've just basically assigned it to run on the server side by using the if and not and then is provided world remote client side. So basically what this does is runs it on server side when there is a not used. And then what we're doing is we're going to set our capacity to 200. Now again the capacity is for how much the block can actually store. For cables you don't want it too high. I would say 200 is pretty good for how much power can actually be stored in one cable. Uh, having it at a really low number it will not allow for a lot of transfer of power. This can be problematic when you have a lot of devices hooked up in a really complex uh, grid system for your cables and devices and stuff like that. So when you get to splitters and stuff, then it'll have a hard time. It'll basically downgrade the power when shifting it places. So it's important to have a really good capacity, not too high, not too low. I would say somewhere in the hundreds, maybe 500 to 200, somewhere in there. Um, it really 200 will probably be just enough where it will be a good uh, capacity for a wire. Uh, the energy stored limit is basically how much, or send limit, pardon me, is basically how much it can basically send at one given time, so one interval. And we have this set to 200. Uh, this will drain the full capacity if the energy stored it has 200. 
If not, then what it's going to do is basically just send what is available up to that uh, send limit. And the energy stored, what we're doing is actually setting this to zero. Uh, if you want to set a cap, like the fill up the block when it's been placed by the added to the world, then what you can do is you can basically change this number to a higher number and it will automatically have the power in the the cable or device when it's been placed. Now, generally you want this set to zero because you have devices like generators and stuff that will do the generate the power for you. And then down here, what we're doing is we're testing for the block direction and each direction is basically located right here. These are north, east, south, west, and up and down. And then what we're doing is we're going to assign the variables for our plugs. These are the directions that basically indicate what is our input and what is our output, as well as what sides aren't used. So anytime you see a lowercase none, basically means that it's not being used for an input or output side. And output basically means it's uh, going to output power that direction and input basically means it's an input side for that particular direction. Now the same texture for the properties, this, the front is going to be facing north, the back is facing south. So in our case, our north texture is our output one so we know that we need to assign the north and output um, basically variable when it's placed at north the other thing that we need to do is set our south one to south and then all the other sides because we only have two sides for our input and output textures then we're going to just set to none and then we're just going to rotate and change the variables based on the rotation so based on this we're going to change these variables here to properly align with the ones that we need to. Um, so that's basically all that's happening when the block is added. Uh, let's take a look at the when block is placed by the player and we'll take a look at the script to basically get the rotation auto rotation thing set up. Okay, so when the block is placed by the player, what we're doing is we're going to test for a forge variable. Now I'll get into that in just a second, but we need to basically assign forge and then colon and then variable energy blocks. So exactly like that. And then what this will do is it's a global um, tag that we can basically use to detect other forge blocks. This makes it cross mod compatible. Uh, now, what we're doing here is we're testing south of the block, one block south of the current block being placed by the player. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test if the face that is at that block, so south of it, is an output of north. So basically, energy plug north equals output. Now, what that will do is it will test if the block is facing north and if the block is facing north, then what it's going to do is test to see if this variable is an output, uh, output variable. And we're also testing to see if it's a forge energy block. Now this basically allows us to only um, rotate if it's a block that supports variable energy. And then we're testing if the north direction of the block south is an output of nature. If that's true, then what we're gonna do is we're going to set the block direction to north, uh, the same direction that this block is at south of the block. And then we're going to set the variables very similar to when the block is added. Uh, we're gonna set it to our output at, for north and east will be none and so on relative to the directions that our input and output blocks on our current block that we're placing. Uh, another thing to note is we're just testing for the block south or the block next to the block that we're currently placing and then we're going to actually assign the variables to the current block. So this goes for every direction 
uh, when it's being placed. So the first one is facing north, the second one is east, south, west, up, and down. So that's basically all that's doing, and it's basically rotating the block if there's an output slot available. This code might be updated in the future. I'll do a tutorial on that if I change it to be more efficient. So let's hop into the last uh, procedure for the cable and I'll explain how this part works. So the last one is update tick and this basically controls the movement of the power. Uh, it's basically testing for the rotation. Again, we're running it on server side like the other two procedures. And then we're testing for the direction of the block that it's currently facing. We'll use north for the example, but it's basically the exact same thing for all the um, other things, just different um, directions that we're basically pushing it. So we'll take a look at north because we've been following north direction. So the first thing that we're doing is we're testing for the direction. I've covered that. We're now looking north. Then what we're going to do is we're going to test for the current blocks energy storage and if it's greater than zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test to see if the plug south of the plug north, the block north of the block is an input. So now we have basically an, a block that is the current block that we have at this one right here is south of the block that we're testing for. So negative z basically means north. So north one. So relative to this block, north direction. If uh, the south input, so obviously the block that we are currently at would be um, facing south, so south of the block, we need to basically test if the input is it has a value of an input. If that's true, then what we need to do is we need a local variable for every direction. So for example, we have north, east, south, west, so we have created a local variable for each one of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the energy capacity of the block south of uh, or pardon me, north of the current block. And then we're also going to subtract that by the energy stored of that same block. So the block north of the current block that we're basically sending power from. And that will be stored to the energy north variable, which we can later use to basically test for different conditions. Now, the next thing that we're doing is we're going to run this little script right here. This basically tests if there's a limit. If it's greater than zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, now, this is again for the current block, not the block south. So, if there is a limit set to this block that is greater than zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to get the energy the local variable energy north and test if it's greater than the energy send limit of the current block so now we're basically testing if the value that we got so capacity minus energy stored which is the remainder of the power is greater than the send limit if that's true then what we're going to do is we're going to send the maximum power of the send limit but before we do that, we don't know exactly how much power the energy storage can actually have. So this is where this script comes in next. This is the actual script to basically send the power. So after we know that we need, we have a send limit and we're going to be sending the variable, what we're doing is we're assigning the local variable the send limit of the current block. So now that we've basically tested for how much is remaining in the block that we want to send the power to. We're then testing if there is a send limit and if there is a send limit then we're going to readjust that number so it's if it's higher than the send limit to only the send limit 
maximum capacity. So say it this uh, the capacity for the block that we're sending power to is uh, say 500, but our cables only support uh, 200 for the send limit. Now it's going to basically downgrade that number to 200, so it will only send 200 rather than 500. After that, what we're doing is basically running the final test for the condition. Now the final test is we're going to test if the current block that we're sending the power from is greater than the energy, equal to or greater than the energy uh, that we basically calculated up here. So now if it's under basically 200 or a capacity for a cable, then what we're going to do is we're just going to run this script here, which is just going to send what we have of the cable itself. So any power under 200. Um, if it is equal to or greater than 200, then we're just going to run this script here, which is going to send the 200. So there are two parts to this actually. There is two things that we need to do. Now the first thing that we need to do is actually send the power. So we're going to set the energy stored of the uh, block north of this of the current block sending the power and then we're going to get the the energy stored of the block north of the block that we're currently sending the power and then we're going to add the variable local variable that we basically stored and what this will do is it will basically send the 200 um, energy points from our current block. Now this is only if the energy is for the current block is greater than the energy that we can basically send for the limit. Now if it doesn't have a limit what this will basically do is send all the available power to fill up the capacity of the other block. So that's where this comes in it basically just adjusts the part where it basically balances out for the energy capacity. If it's set to zero though, then it's going to send as all the power that it can possibly send for from the current block to the receiving block and uh, it will uh, fill the capacity up for that one but only the amount that it can actually receive. The other part right down here is basically just removing the current block that's sending the power uh, minus the amount that we just basically sent. So it's this this line right here is basically sending the power to the next block. This line here is basically uh, removing the power that we basically just sent from the current block. And same thing goes here. The only difference is we're rather than sending the variable amount, we're sending the the actual stored energy from the, our current block. And then we're also removing the same amount of the current block. So this will only happen if there is less power than the amount that we can actually send to the capacity. So um, in a sense, what it's doing is if the block is, say the block has 500 that we can send it to, we'll use that example again, and the, the, the cable itself only has 200, then this script will run because it will only it can only send up to 200 because of the capacity of the current block. Uh, it's not going to send a full 500 because it's it doesn't have that much power. So this is where this script would end up being running. So that's basically the gist of the way the energy is passed from one block to another. You're going to see a lot of the script when it comes down to all the devices such as um, energy generators, cables, splitters, uh, converters, things like that. This is all what is going to basically run. So once you master the understanding of this particular system, you'll be able to basically create any type of block that uses variable energy. Uh, there is just a couple more things that I want to basically show. And now that we got the cable out of the way, you probably want to know how to set up the variable for or the uh, tag. You will need to assign your your energy um, energy blocks, variable energy blocks, to the forge energy uh, tag. So you can basically have cross mod support. 
Uh, the tag name for that, which is going to be the standard for variable energy, is variable energy underscore blocks. So variable underscore energy underscore blocks. Now, this needs to be under the forge namespace and set to blocks. And then you're going to assign all your blocks to this particular um, tag here. Once you've done that, then the rest of the script should run perfectly fine. And the other thing is the message that I have basically assigned to test the energy plugs and the energy capacity as well as the amount of energy stored. This is what it looks like. It's basically just printing out the variables. All the procedures and stuff that are in this tutorial will be available on the GitHub page for the for download and as well as the tutorial link for this video. So without further ado, if you're new to my channel, uh, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Thank you.